Hey everyone, welcome back to Code in Motion. Today we're solving leak code problem number 152, find the maximum product subarray. So given an integer array nums, find the subarray that has the largest product and return the product. So the reason why this question is tricky is because of negative values, which actually flip the product sign. And so in this example, the maximum product you can get is two times three. The reason is because the negative two would make this negative 12 instead of six, right? But you could imagine if this was a negative four, then the maximum product would actually be multiplying all the elements in the array because having two negative numbers flips the sign. Another thing that makes this problem tricky is the zero because if you include the zero, then your product is zero, but zero is still greater than having a negative product. So if you look at negative two by itself or negative one by itself, you'd still prefer zero since that's that's greater than negative two or negative one. So let's go through a conceptual overview, looking at three different cases that'll make this problem easier to understand. Case one is when we have an array that only has positive numbers. In this case, the maximum product of the array is the entire array, right? If you trying to find the maximum product and you only have positive numbers, you should include all those positive numbers. So in this case, the max product will be one times two times three times four, which is 24. So the conclusion or the lesson learned here is that if you're dealing with positive numbers, always include them in your maximum product. Now let's look at negative numbers, which is case number two. So with the negative numbers, I have two, negative three, four, and negative two. And like we said, negative numbers are tricky because they can flip the sign. If you multiply two negative numbers, you'll end up with a positive number. So for negative numbers, it's not good enough to just keep track of the maximum product. We should also keep track of the minimum product as well. And the reason is because the minimum product, if it's a negative number and you, you're inspecting a negative number, then a negative times a negative will result in a positive, and it could be that it's greater than your current maximum product. And so what we're going to do is introduce an eye pointer as we go through the array, and we're really trying to keep track of the running min and max product values up until index i. Okay? So let's go through the first element, which is 2. In this case, we're just going to take that as the min and max product since it's the first element, and then we go on to negative 3. Now at negative three, we need to take the minimum and maximum products between multiple values. Well, what are those values? You could take the minimum of the current number you're at, or the number times the minimum product, or the number times the maximum product. So let's see what that looks like as we plug in the numbers. For the minimum product, this is the minimum between negative three, negative six, and negative six. So we're going to take negative six. That translates into 2 times negative 3 as the minimum product. So let's update that. Now for the max product, it's the maximum between negative 3, negative 6, and negative 6. So we're going to take negative 3 for the max product. Okay, now we go on to the next element. Now that we're at 4, we do the same calculation again. So we take the minimum between 4 negative 24 and negative 12 for the min product and that's actually going to be negative 24 right so 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 times 4 is negative 24 that, that is the minimum product and for the maximum product we're going to take 4 the number itself right so we're going to ignore 2 times negative 3 which is negative 6 because 4 is greater than negative 6. now we go on to the next element which is negative 2 and we run the same exact process. So for the min product, we're looking at the minimum between negative 2, 48, and negative 8, which of course is going to be negative 8. So we update that. And then look what happens to the max product. We're currently at 4, but we're going to take the maximum between negative 2, 48, and negative 8. And it's because the min product was negative 24, and we're looking at negative 2. So negative 2 times negative 24 is positive 48 and the max product becomes 48. That's why it's very important to keep track of both the min product and the max product. 
So the conclusion over here is that negative numbers can flip the min and max product values, so we keep track of both. Now for case number three, this is where we look at the zero. And for zeros, it's really important that we somehow reset our algorithm, and we'll see how that works now. So we're gonna look at the first index, which is negative two, and we'll take that for the min and max products. Now we scan zero. And so we're gonna run the same exact calculations we did before. So zero actually will, will make the product of the number times min product and number times max, max product into zero. So we take minimum and maximum of zero, 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 which is just zero. And this is how we're gonna deal with the zero case. It actually lets us use the same exact code and implementation, but I just wanted to show you how these same calculations can also solve the zero case. So right now, let's look at what happens when I go to negative one. Now I'm at negative one. I'm gonna run the same exact calculations. You'll see that for the min product, we're taking now negative one because that's smaller than zero. But for the max product, we're gonna keep zero because zero is greater than negative one. And then we're gonna move on to the last index, uh, which is element four. We run the same exact calculations. In this case, the minimum product becomes negative four and the maximum product becomes four. In this case, you see how having the num compared to num times min product and num times max product is important because when we deal with a zero case or a negative case and we reach a positive number, the max product is actually just taking the number by itself. And so that's why we really look at three values, the number, the number times min product, and the number times max product at every iteration. And the conclusion here for the zero case is that having a zero in your array will reset the products, right? Because anything times zero is zero. So now let's look at the algorithm using a real example. I have three variables I initialized over here. The global max product is going to keep track of the absolute global max product as we iterate through the array. And this is going to be what we return at the end of the, the algorithm. The max product and the min product are the running max and min products up until index i, like we've seen before. And we're going to initialize all of these variables to the first element in the array, negative three, just to keep it simple. And we're going to start iterating at element number two, which is one. So let's process number one by using the same calculations we did uh, in the conceptual overview. So in this case, I need to update my minimum product value uh, to negative three. In this case, it's already negative three, so I keep it the same. For the max product, it's the maximum between one, negative three, and negative three, so I update it to one. In this case, my max product is greater than my global max product, which is my result, so I need to update from negative three to one. Now, let's go to negative six and repeat the process. So the min product is gonna be the minimum between negative six, 18, and negative six, so let's update that to negative six. And for the max product, we're gonna take 18. So let's update that to 18. In this case, 18 is greater than my current global max product, which is one. So let's update the global max product to 18. Now let's go to element zero. As we've seen before, zero basically zeros out the min and max products. So we take the minimum and maximum between zero, zero, zero which is zero for both min and max. So let's update those. And in this case, we don't update the global max product because 18 is greater than zero. So let's move on to the next element, which is two. For the min product, it's gonna be the minimum between two and zero, which is zero. So we keep zero for the min product, but we update the max product to the number two, which is greater than zero. Now we don't update the global max because 18 is greater than two. So we move on to the next element. We take the minimum between five, zero, and 10, which is zero, so min product stays the same, and the max product becomes 10. So let's update that. And the global max product remains 18. So we're done the algorithm, the max subarray product is 18, and this algorithm runs in O of N time complexity because we iterate through the array once, 
and O of one space complexity because we only keep track of three variables. All right, so let's code out this example. We're gonna initialize our three variables. So we have the running min product, the running max product, and also our global max product, which I'm just gonna call res for result. And let's initialize this to the first element uh, in the list. Now for every number in nums, but remember we start at the second element. So we're gonna use one colon over here to ignore the first element. We need to take the min and max values between three candidates, right? So the candidates that we have are, you could take num by itself, num times the min product, and num times the max product. And for your min product, you take the minimum of these candidates. And for the max product, you take the maximum of these candidates. And your result is equal to the max between the previous result, the global max product, and the current max product. And there you have it. After this, you just return back your result. And let's run this algorithm. And it's successful. Thank you so much for sticking around. This was a long one, and I hope you learned a lot, especially in the conceptual overview to break down the problem into further segments. If you enjoyed this type of content and you want to see the LeetCode Blind 75 list, be sure to subscribe and like the video down below. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.